Okay, folks, uh, this is part two of geometric vectors uh, in my pre-calculus book. It's section uh, 8.1, so this will not make any sense to you unless you watch part 8.1 first. So take a look at that first uh, if you haven't already. So here, here's section F. So in a rowing exercise, John was rowing directly across a river at the rate of 4 miles per hour. The current was flowing at a rate of 3 miles per hour. So let's just stop right there. Here's John going going here he's going here four miles per hour and the current's going down at three miles per hour okay so if John starts here and he's going across this way and the current's current is pushing him down this way can you see he's going to end up going down like this because the current pushes him down so I'm going to be doing this vector and this vector and it's going to get me my resultant vector going down here okay so we're going to use a ruler to draw each vector to scale and then draw a vector to represent the path of the boat. Okay, so determine the magnitude and the resultant uh, velocity of the boat by measuring the vector. Okay, so let's unwind this problem here. So we're going to let, uh, with your ruler, let one inch represent the four miles per hour. So if I do three-fourths of the inch, and you can see three-fourths on your ruler, that would be three uh, of the miles per hour right there okay so here is uh, my my one inch you know and and um, uh, I can't put my ruler up here and, and make my line segment at the same time so we'll just pretend like that's one inch right there so then three-fourths of that would be three miles per hour and so here's uh, John going across in the boat and then here's uh, the current pushing him down so what's happening is is we're going to get a resultant right here and I'm going to go ahead and use um, uh, the parallelogram method. So uh, I just can complete this parallelogram right here and so here's the resultant right here. The initial spot is right there and he's getting pushed down to right there. Okay, so um, it's going to ask you to measure that. Well I can tell right now you guys that this is a a, um, a three, four, five right triangle. So right here, here's my here's my three, here's my four, five right triangle and if you picked up your ruler you'd find out that that's going to be five miles per hour so the magnitude is uh, five miles per hour okay alright so a quantity with only magnitude is called a scalar quantity uh, examples might be mass or length of time uh, temperature so we're going to be doing some uh, physics type problems here soon so the number used to measure the scalar quantities are called uh, scalars obviously and the the product of a scalar k and and a vector uh, a is the vector with the same direction as a and the magnitude of k times a so what I say say I had this vector right here here's vector a right here and I multiply it times 2 well, it would be here's one vector a and then two vector a's would be right there. Okay, so that that would be the scalar multiple of that. And if k is less than zero, then uh, what that's going to do is just make the the vector go in the opposite direction, k times that amount. So that's what this says right there. And I I didn't catch that opposite until the lesson was done, and I I couldn't change it. So I, there's the word opposite inside of there. So if if k is less than zero, the scalar multiple, then it just changes, makes it go in the opposite direction. All right, so here, here we go. We have a figure right here. Vector B is three times um, uh, vector A. So can you see a uh, vector? Here's here's A. Here's three times A. One, two, three. And here's vector B. It's the same length, so it has the same magnitude, and it's going in the same direction. So vector B is three times that. Vector C is twice, or sorry, negative two times A. Well, the negative makes it go in the opposite direction, and this is twice the length of vector A. Okay, so it's twice the magnitude of that. Okay, that's all that means right there, you guys. So we're going to use the triangle method to find uh, vector A minus 3 times vector B. Okay, so here's vector A. I'm going to draw vector A right here. And then we're going to subtract 3 times vector B. Well, since vector B goes this way, I'm going to go this way 3 times. So it's going to go down here. Okay, so it's going to look something like that. Here's vector A, and we're vector A. I'm doing the triangle method. So at the end of vector A, then I do three times angle or vector B. And so negative, it's minus, so I'm going in the opposite direction. So there's my three. And then so where I started to where I ended is my resultant right here. So here's my resultant vector A minus three times vector B. Okay, all right, so we're going to use the triangle method again to find twice uh, vector v minus half of vector uh, w. Okay, so twice vector v, I think I'm going to do it over here. So I'm going to go one vector v, two vector v, so it's going to be something like that. And then it's going to be 
take away a half, so that means it's going to change direction. So a half of w, vector w, is going to go back this way. So the resultant is going to be where I started and where I ended right there. Okay, so something like that. Okay, so here's my resultant right here, this red guy right there. Okay, pretty groovy, right? All right, let's. Uh, uh, so two. Two or more vectors are parallel if and only if they have the same or opposite directions. Okay, so there's a couple of examples of uh, parallel vectors. Vector i is parallel to vector j, and vector l is parallel to vector k. Okay, so they can go in the same direction like these two vectors are, or they can go in opposite directions like these two vectors are. Okay, um, if and only if they have um, uh, parallel or if they're in the same direction or opposite directions. Okay, so two or more vectors whose sum... Uh, is a given vector. Uh, it's called the components of the given vector. So here's my given vector x right here, and this vector x is the sum of vector q plus vector p. Okay, and then so here uh, vector p is called the vertical component, and here vector q is called the horizontal component of vector x. Okay, so notice vector x is the sum of vector q plus vector p right there, and so they're called the components. This is the vertical component. This is the horizontal component. Okay, don't worry about the vertical horizontal too much. Just notice that they're just called components. All right, so a ship uh, leaving port sails at 75 miles in a direction of 35 degrees uh, north of due east. Okay, so here's due east this way. And so 35 degrees, I'm going to create a little 35 degree angle right there with my protractor. And then so my vector is going to be 75 miles. So find the magnitude. Uh, of the vertical and horizontal components. All right, well, let's let's put this together. Let's draw a vector s and then draw the horizontal vector through the initial point of s. So I'll do vector s going up here. Uh, you know what? It's probably easier to do the horizontal first. Do the horizontal and then get your protractor into a 75 or 30, uh, I'm sorry, 35 degree angle going up here. And then we're going to um, uh, call that vector vector s. So this is my 75 miles uh, right here. Okay, so that's my magnitude, 75 miles right there. Alrighty, so uh, now we're going to do, uh, they want to know, find the magnitude of the vertical and horizontal components. So from here at the ending point right there, I'm going to draw a vertical. So my vertical is going to go straight right down right there, and it's going to make a nice right triangle. And a nice right triangle, I can make, I can do my trigonometry from my geometry class right there to do sine, cosine, and tangent. So the sine of 35 is opposite over hypotenuse, and the cosine of 35 is adjacent over hypotenuse. So I can find out x and y right there, okay? So I find out um, that x is around uh, 61, and so that would be in miles, and y is around 43 uh, miles right there. So, so the magnitude of the vertical component is about 43, and the horizontal is about 61. All right, so vectors are used in physics also to represent velocity, acceleration, and forces uh, acting upon objects. So, for example, a piling for a high-rise building is pushed by two bulldozers at exactly the same time. One bulldozer is exerting uh, 1,550 pounds of a westerly direction, okay, and the other uh, is pushing it with a force of 30 th or 3,050 pounds in a northerly direction. Well, Okay, so what it's going to ask you is find the magnitude of the resulting force upon the two pilings to the nearest pound. All right, we'll unwind that in a second. So what's the direction of the resulting force of the piling to the nearest tenth of the pound? So that would be the angle. Okay, so I'm going to let, um, uh, let x represent the force of the bulldozer 1, okay, and then let y be the, uh, vector y be the result of the, so it says it's going in a westerly direction, so there's my initial one right here, and then this one's going in a northerly direction, so that one's going up there, and there's my um, forces right there, okay, and then um, what I'm going to do is draw uh, my resultant vector, which is right here, my r, my vector r right here. This represents the total force from this one pushing it this way and this one pushing it this way right here. Okay, so uh, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of the resultant. Okay, so a little a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So I did it right there. So um, uh, the magnitude of uh, vector r is uh, about equal to 3,421 right there. Okay, and they said to round it to the nearest uh, 10 pounds. So I'm going to round it to 3,420. Okay, so it's about uh, 3,420. Okay, then the other question was, what is the direction of the resulting force 
uh, upon the pilings. Okay, well, I'm going to first figure out, okay, so we can figure out this angle. Or th now, they want this angle up here. This is my angle up here, and I think I did it this, I got this angle first, and then I took it off a 90, I think, right there. Okay, so we're going to let uh, uh, angle A represent this little angle right here, and it's going to represent the angle of the resulting force uh, vector my, uh, and, the, and the horizontal vector. Okay, doing a little tangent uh, trigonometry. I get, I uh, find out that that's 63 degrees right there. So if that's 63 degrees, this angle right up here is 27 degrees, okay? So the direction of the resulting force upon both uh, pilings is 27 degrees west of north, okay? All right, so to just give them a try, you guys. I know it's kind of hard, these word problems, but um, uh, we'll give them a shot, and we'll work on them in class also. So um, that would be your homework assignment if you're in my class. Take care.